actually going to sit on a block today. You don't need it, uh, but if your hips are feeling a little, um, a little stiff, a little tender, it's nice to sit up on a block so that you can open the hips a little bit easier. And a pillow would work too. So if you have a pillow, like a couch throw pillow or something like that, that would work as well. So we're going to go ahead and start with just a little bit of breath here. So finding your seat, hands can rest either wherever it's uh, most valuable to you. So either on your knees or maybe one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly. And we're just going to take a few breaths here. Lifting the crown of the head up towards the ceiling and sitting down into the floor without any breath technique to start, just follow the path of your breath. So the rhythm as you breathe in, the heart rises, the area under the lungs will lift. And then as you exhale, feeling the hands kind of falling down. Inhaling all the way in through the nose, taking it at your own pace and exhaling everything that you don't need here today. Take a few moments to let the shoulders fall down from your ears. And then bringing your awareness to your intention for your practice. What is it that you need from your practice today? What do I need today? Maybe you just need some gentle movement without any kind of anything attached to it. Maybe you need a bit of strength or just flow with breath. Maybe you just need a space to be which is perfect. Very good. Go ahead and keep your eyes closed if you like. Uh, we're just going to do some gentle stretches. Bring your fingertips to the back of the head. You can interlace the fingers if that feels good or just bring the fingertips to the back of the head and let the elbows come forward, tuck the chin and using the weight of the hands and arms, just elongate through the back of the neck as you tuck chin in towards collarbone. We'll take about three breaths here. Try not to resist into the stretch. And then as you inhale, I want you to lift the heart and open the elbows out. So getting a nice stretch, opening. If you've been in the garden, I pulled a ton of weeds this week, so shoulders are feeling it. And then one more time, just exhale round, hollow out the belly. And then inhale to lift, open up the heart. Beautiful. Go ahead and bring the arms down to your knees. And let's continue working through the neck a little bit. So right ear, right shoulder, open up through the left side. Let the head fall forward as chin comes to chest and then sweeps up and over to the other side, left ear, left shoulder. And then just back and forth. If it feels good to you, you can take a full circle, but that isn't necessary to get a good stretch. Sometimes that feels a little vulnerable and not everybody really enjoys that kind of stretch. Good, and then let's lift the head. Find that neutral position. So you would hold a kiwi here. So it's not quite a baseball, right? And it's not really tucked, but there's just a little space there. Your chin actually is out a little bit to create that length. Let's find cactus arms to begin with. We're going to, on our exhale, bring the forearms together, bring the palms together and press the elbows and forearms. So you should be looking directly through the hands so like one eyeball on either side of the hands there nice and then go ahead and open back out on your inhale open up open the heart there's a little arch in the back as you lift and then exhale press so the key is to really squeeze the elbows and forearms together to spread the shoulder blades wide inhale to lift 
Nice. One more. Exhale, push down. And then this time when we lift up, we don't open up all the way. We just bring the elbows in line with the shoulders and keeping that shoulder mobility going. We're just going to fold the arms down. So for most of us right here, about 90 degrees is as far as you need to go. Some of us have a little bit more range of motion and you can actually get the fingers kind of pointing down, but that's not for everyone. All right, back up and down. Good, and then just lifting and lowering here. And if this is creating tension, just back off a little bit. We don't wanna create tension. We just wanna warm up through the upper arms. Last one, open up. Good, and then go ahead and shake that out. If you're sitting on a block like I am, come off that block, set it out of the way, somewhere where you don't uh, kick it. And let's come all the way down onto our backs. So finding your way into a very easy shape, feet are on the floor, knees point towards the sky, and then lift the tailbone and kind of reach the tailbone towards your feet as you lower down onto the mat. So that's going to suction cup your, the small of your back into the mat. Keep the left foot right where it is, and let's bring the right leg in and extend it up. So working through the ankles, a little point, a little flex, maybe some circles. We're just going to feel out what's going on here. So point and flex and circle about. Spreading the toes wide. If you have the space, you can start to extend that bottom leg, that left leg long down the mat as you point, flex, and spin all about. Very good. And then go ahead and maybe walk your hands a little bit further up the leg until you feel just the beginning of a tug on the back of the leg. And point and flex and circle about. Now bending this knee, you're going to pull it in towards your armpit. So not towards the front, but actually over towards the side. Your thigh is going to scrape by the ribs there-ish. If you need the space, you can always rebend that left leg. And then if you have the room, maybe pulling that knee in, wrapping the elbow around. This is enough. If you're feeling the hips here, you don't have to go any further. But if you want a little bit deeper, you'll grab onto the blade side, so the pinky toe side of that right foot with your hands and pull your knee back by the shoulder into a half happy baby. So just a nice gentle opening of the hips here. Beautiful. And then go ahead and release that. We're going to cross that right leg over the left, create your figure four and take that gentle stretch. So reaching through the hole in the legs, wrapping the fingers around the shin and maybe rocking a little side to side. Perfect. Let's try that whole series on the other side. So the right leg comes down. The left leg is going to extend up, just gripping wherever you can. Point and flex and circle and spin. Just waking up the feet, getting a little bit of mobility. So like me, if you're like me, everything I do is barefoot, right? And walking in the grass and on uneven terrain. So a lot of times you hit a hole and you don't even realize it. Well, we really depend on our ankles to stabilize in those situations. Good, maybe extend that leg out, that right leg, and maybe pull that left leg in towards you. Get a nice gentle tug. We're just warming up, so we don't want to overdo it. And then bending that knee and pull it in towards the left armpit or the other side, whichever side you're on. Again, this is enough. You don't need to go any further. If you're already getting that stretch, don't worry about it. Otherwise, taking that half happy baby. So if you're heading towards half happy baby, 
the most important thing is that the shin is perpendicular to the floor so it would create like a t-shape with the floor so you're flexing your foot you're flexing your knee and your knee is on the outside of that arm if that isn't really your shape today you can just hang out here holding on to that shin Good. Finding your way to that figure four, slide the hands between the hole in the leg, cross that left leg over the right. And also you could keep that right leg extended if that feels better. nice let's go ahead and release we'll bring both feet to the mat and we're going to rock a little side to side easy twisting back and forth very good using your hands behind your legs let's go ahead and rock up find our way to a seated shape with the legs reaching out in front of you. So we're going to continue to work through the length of the back body here. So reaching the legs long, pulling the toes back and using your hands to help you, just kind of push the hands into the mat as you lift up and then taking a few steps forward into a forward fold. Nice. So your forward fold, you want to be careful not to round too much over this shape. So you want to keep that flat back. And actually, there's a teeny tiny little curve in the lower back. And keep reaching the heart towards your ankles here. We're just increasing that stretch that we did on our back by applying the resistance of the floor here. Uh, taking just about three more breaths here, melting over the legs. You should feel a nice tug across the lower back if the back is flat. Maybe as you exhale, you might get a little bit deeper, kind of playing around with the edges of this shape. And then go ahead and walk the hands back. Put the feet on the mat, bend the knees, and this might take a little bit of maneuvering, but we're just going to come into tiny ball towards the kind of top of our mat. So bouncing around on your the balls of your feet, kind of going a little right and left, side to side, and then tuck the chin, round through the back. Moving with breath, placing the hands on the mat or the fingertips on the mat, we're going to go between a forward fold and tiny ball. So the fingertips are on the mat. You're going to push into the mat with your hands, push the heels down, knees are bent, crown of the head comes towards the floor as the tailbone lifts up. And then when you get to your inhale, you're going to lower down, the heels are going to come off the mat and then lift the heart as you're up onto the tippy tippy toes as much as you can looking up so we'll take about three rounds of that just flowing between all right so on your own breath your exhale is to stand and fold completely bring out the lungs and then inhale is to lift and sit down nice lift the heart exhale to fold and you can move faster or slower than i am and then inhale to lift. Nice, exhale to fold. And we're going to hold here in this forward fold. So go ahead and heel to your feet about as wide as your mat, bend the knees slightly and just grab opposite elbows and let yourself kind of drape a little side to side here. Good. Go ahead and place the hands down, find a little half lift, and then step back into a tabletop shape. So hands and knees, just stepping back, placing the knees on the mat, and finding your way into your tabletop. 
So we open up the shoulders so that we could get a little bit deeper into them. I want you to walk your hands forward so that there's an angle. See, there's like an angle. It's almost like a down dog. And then I want you to push away from your hands. Hips go back so that they're over the heels. So my upper body feels down dog-ish here. And then from here, I'm just going to slide my forehead down towards the mat. So it's down dog on the top half and tabletop on the bottom half. So they call this puppy pose. And I can say 100% puppies do this. <laughs> nice and grip in the mat with your fingers. So this stretch should show up somewhere about the middle of your arm and climb up into probably just under the armpits on the side there. Getting into your lats. And then let's inhale, find your way back to your tabletop, walk the hands back and lift the heart, arch the back. Exhale round. Inhale lift. Exhale round. And then lifting the last time, curl the toes under. And if it's in your practice today, find your way up and back, downward dog. Otherwise you can hang out from tabletop. First down dog of the day, press your right heel down, bend the left knee. Press the left heel down, bend the right knee. To the right and to the left. And then let's look all the way up towards the top and walk those feet up the mat, forward fold, top of the mat. We're gonna rise all the way up, inhale, lift. Press palms together at the top, take a nice big back bend here, and then float down, forward fold, hands drape down the front of the body. Inhale, half lift, and then just step your right foot back, coming to a warrior one. So your right foot steps out, it's hip width, the left knee is going to bend, and then reach the arms all the way up into this warrior one. So wherever you're at, you can step it way back, you can Kind of go somewhere in the middle and reach up. Nice. Back foot is planted. Reach the arms up. Straighten the front leg. Hinge from the hips and fold down. Bringing your fingers to either your shin or either side of that left foot. And just like we did with small ball, we're just going to flow through here. So if you want to lift that back heel to give you extra space you can otherwise keep it planted reach the arms all the way up nice flat back bend the knee open up and then exhale fold hinging from the hips flat back folding over the left leg inhale bend the knee reach up exhale fold so stretching and strengthening at the same time and then last one bend the knee reach up and then this time, cactus arms, open the heart. And you can always lift that back heel up when you need to. Perfect. Both hands come down either side of that front foot and then step back into your tabletop. Knees come down. And let's find our way back to that puppy. Get into those arms. So stretch away from the fingertips. Forehead comes to the mat. Sit back with your hips and melt the forehead down to the floor. So this is great for lengthening, right? Creating a lot of space here. Moving a little faster because we know where we're going. Curl the toes under, rock forward, and find your way into your downward facing dog. Good, walk your feet as far forward as you can get them. Walk, step, hop, forward, fold, melt over the legs, and then root to rise, sweep all the way up. This is a great morning practice too. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. You can put your glass of water right there on the small of your back. Step that left foot way back, hip width. Find your way to that warrior one, reach up. So you might be different side to side. Take a look at that right leg. Mine always wants to kind of peel out. Pull it in towards the midline, maybe looking up. So we're going to flow, same flow we did before. Straighten the leg, 
hinge from the hips. Make sure this left hip doesn't kick back. It's going to want to. And then just fold down over the front leg. So your fold might be more like this. And that's perfect as long as you're feeling that stretch. Good. Inhale, lift. Reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift. Totally lost count. I think this is our best one. Exhale, fold. We're going to hold it right here, nose to knee, and sweep that right hip back, left hip forward, and melt over the leg. Good. Go ahead and bend the knee. Step back into your tabletop. Knees down. This time, when the elbows come down, we're actually coming down onto your elbows. You can keep your hands as wide as your shoulders, fingers nice and wide, or if you don't feel quite as stable, you can uh, interlace your fingers over your head. We're going to bring the head and we're going to test this. So your knees are right underneath your hips and when your head is down, it should kind of shake in between the hands. If that works for you, then go ahead and move on to the next shape. If you can't quite freely move your head between your arms. Your shoulders aren't very open and you can absolutely do puppy again. Otherwise, we're coming into dolphin. So from your pose here, you're gonna lift the knees off the mat and start to walk the feet a little bit closer to the head. So go ahead and let the head dangle. Yes, no. If it becomes too much for your shoulders, you can always come back down into puppy. You can put a little bend in the knees and push the hips away. Your head moves freely here. So you don't, you don't get caught up on the mat. Again, if you are, that's an indication that you're very tight here. This is an excellent shoulder opener. Beautiful. And then from here, we're just going to bring the knees back down to the mat, sit back into a child's pose and take a bit of a break. Wrap the arms around behind you. Let your hands rest either on your feet or under your um, legs. I kind of sandwich my hands between my calf and my thigh and let the shoulders roll forward. We're going to be here for about four rounds of breath total. So you've got three more. We're just giving the shoulders a little break. Inhaling nice and long and letting go any tension. Nice, last breath here. Reach the hands long. Find your way to that uh, downward facing dog so your fingers are displayed nice and wide. Their shoulder width, curl the toes under and lift the hips up and back. Beautiful. Look up towards the hands, walk, step, hop, depends on what terrain you're on. You're going to land with those feet about hip width at the top of the mat and just melt over the legs. A little bit of a supported balance here. Find a half lift. So fingertips come to the mat, lift the heart, shoulders, find that flat back, and then zip up the belly here. We're going to step the right foot back behind and just keep the toe on the mat. And then with the fingertips on the mat, you're going to start to slide that foot up off the mat. So keeping a little bend in the standing leg. So it's a supported warrior three. Nice, and then from here, you might fold a little bit deeper and lift the leg a little bit higher. Nice long stretch. Beautiful. Both feet come together. Let's find our way into the small ball. Give yourself a little break there. And then go ahead and find your way back to that forward fold. Good, inhale, half lift. You know where we're going. Exhale, fingertips can stay on the mat. Step the left foot back behind you and then root down into the right leg. So maybe just floating that foot slightly off the mat. Instantly, you should feel that right leg start to fire up. You can maybe start to hinge a little bit from 
the hips. This is getting us into standing split eventually. Maybe lift that left leg a little bit higher. Reach the crown of the head a little bit lower. Good. Can you lift the toes a tiny bit higher? And then go ahead and bring that left foot back down, fall back down into, well not fall down, but come on back down into tiny ball. Perfect. And then sweep the arms. Oops, nope, not, not yet. Don't sweep your arms anywhere, you will fall over. Go ahead and find your way into your forward fall, and then sweep the arms all the way up. Press your palms together at the top, take that back bend, and draw your hands down to your heart. Close your eyes. Check in with that intention that you started at the beginning of class. What brought you to your mat today? And as you work your mind into your intention, I want you to root your body into the mat. So it's really stepping firmly into whatever surface you're on, lifting up the inner thighs, tucking your tailbone down, zipping your belly up, lifting the crown of your head towards the sky. Nice big in breath. And then open mouth, sigh, open your eyes. Next time you come to an in-breath, sweep your arms all the way up. And then fold all the way down. Find a nice half lift here. Step that right foot back. And let's open up into a warrior two. So we're going to keep building through the length of our legs here. Thinking nice and low. Flip the palm on the front hand and reverse your warrior. So reach up overhead, maybe look down that back leg, make sure that pinky toe side of your foot is pushing into the mat as you fold backwards. Nice, straighten the front leg, hinge from the hips and bring that left hand anywhere on that left leg you can get it, right hand comes up. So maybe you just open up here, maybe you reach the floor. If you're close to a wall and wanna slide back, you want your hips and your shoulders against that wall. It's kind of hard to do once you actually test it on a wall. Nice. Warrior two, bend the knee, find the shape, look out over the left hand, sink low. Good. Reverse triangle, so this left leg straightens, reach all the way up, right arm down. So you're rooting down through that front leg, And then windmill both hands down either side of that front foot. Step forward into that forward fold. You can release the or uh, grab opposite elbows. Maybe rock a little side to side. And then reach all the way up. Inhale, lift. Press palms together. We're going to work into that second side and just fold all the way down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, all one breath, step back, left foot, find your way to your warrior two. Left arm back, right arm forward. Nice, relax your shoulders. So if your shoulders are up here, time to bring them down. Reverse your palm, reverse your warrior. Nice. So a lot of times the momentum of going back will draw you out of this warrior. Make sure that knee stays over that ankle. Good, nice. Find your way to triangle, so straighten the front leg, hinge and fold. Right hand is just inside. Technically, triangle has the right hand outside, on just outside the ankle. That is not an accessible shape for everyone. So if you put that finger on the hand on the shin or just inside, that's perfect. Sometimes even the floor just inside the foot helps you to open up that top arm. Nice. Warrior two, bend the knee, and then reversing that triangle, so straighten the right leg, and then reach back behind you. We are nice and stretched out today. I feel super stretchy, which is good. Both hands come down either side of that front foot. One more dolphin here today, so we're going to step back. 
into our tabletop. Set yourself up. Your elbows come down. Your palms come together. You can interlace your fingers. Elbows are underneath your shoulders. Shoulders are stacked. All right. And then go ahead and drop your head. So yes, no. And then from here, maybe lifting the knees, maybe pushing the heels down. Heels work towards the back, tailbone reaches up, and your shoulders stack right over your elbows and your head is in between your hands. All kinds of things you can do with this shape. For most of us, just walking the feet a little bit closer so that your uh, hips come over your shoulders is enough to really light up the back body. This is enough. Usually don't need anything else. You can play around with lifting one leg and then the other if you're advanced. Nice. And then from here, knees come down. That's not a fun pose. And then sit all the way back. Again, wrapping those arms around behind you. Taking the child's pose. Take about three breaths here. to find our way to our backs again so pushing yourself up from that child's pose legs come out in front of you and then all the way down onto your back back body should be nice and long at this point left leg is down right leg is up we're going to re kind of check in with the back body here so pull the right leg in and notice ooh, I got a lot more space here. Maybe even grabbing big toe this time, maybe extending that bottom leg. So if you uh, just notice maybe a tiny gain, that's perfect too. Nice. Now bending that right knee, we're just going to open it up out to the side. So anchor your left hip with your hand and pull that right knee out to the side. You're going to float. So the knee is not coming all the way to the mat only as far open as you can keep the left hip on the mat. As soon as that hip starts to roll, then that's, that's far enough. You don't go any further. Keep that left butt cheek glued down. Use this hand, push it down. Beautiful. And then let's take that left knee across and into a traditional twist. So just bringing it over to the left side, reach the right arm long, and you can either look out the left side or you can turn and look out the right. Beautiful. Use your hands to help you unravel, unwind. Take a few little fidgets to the right and the left. Let's try the other side. Right foot comes down, extend that left leg up. Just test it. See if it feels any different than it did before. This side, I definitely don't have as much room. So there's always one side that's a little bit more challenging. Bending that knee, using the left hand, so it's your left knee, on the outside of that shin, just below the knee. Right hand comes to the hip, and you're going to open up that left leg, open up. So the more you flex that foot of that bent leg, the easier it is, a little bit more room there. find that twist use the both hands actually and just draw that leg across and over the body to the other side left arm reaches long right arm reaches long
then go ahead and unwind, unravel. You can take one last happy baby if you like, or just rocking side to side with the Apanasana. Beautiful. And then we're going to head into our final resting shape into our Shavasana. You're going to reach your right leg long down the mat and then your left leg long down the mat. And then your hands can come by your side or maybe overhead because we did a lot of shoulder opening today. So it might feel really good to find cactus arms or they call these happy baby arms. If you've ever seen a baby, they tend to really like their hands over their heads. Palms are up, eyes are closed. And just allow yourself to breathe here. No technique, just breathing. Bringing a little, little bit of movement to your fingers and toes. Perhaps rolling towards one side or the other. Pausing there for about three or four rounds of breath. for you. Maybe back into your Sukhasana easy pose, crisscross applesauce. Your hands are on your lap. Maybe you're in hero pose up on your knees. Whatever shape works for you. We're going to wrap up today's class with a round of mantra meditation. So mantra meditation is taking a phrase and just repeating it over and over. I like to attach a mantra to a breath. So it can be something as simple as, I am breathing in and I am breathing out. The idea behind mantra meditation is that when you fill the space of the mind with something repetitive and simple, then it basically pushes everything else out of the way. So pick a phrase that you like. Uh, today, I'm going to suggest the mantra, I am exactly where I am meant to be. This place is perfect for me. So just repeating that, I am exactly where I am meant to be. This place is perfect for me. Breathing in. I am exactly where I am meant to be. Breathing out, this place is perfect for me. So taking the next several rounds, we're going to take about 10 rounds, whatever mantra you decide on, whatever you're working on today. I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out, whatever it is. 
I'm exactly where I am meant to be. This place is perfect for me. Keep saying the words in your mind. See the words attached to the breath. Feel the words and what they mean to you. I'm exactly where I am meant to be. This place is perfect for me. And then start to drift away from your mantra, just following the breath so the pattern stays the same, just without the words. Notice the space you created much more room for growth, calm, peaceful. And just sit with that. Bringing your hands to heart center if you choose, maybe bowing your head if you like. Thank you for joining me on the mat this afternoon. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Namaste, ladies.